My name is Valentina V. I am a director, cinematographer, and editor in Los Angeles. This is going to be a 45 minute session regardless of when I started. So don't worry. I'm going to give you all the good stuff. So for those of you who waited patiently, who were here, who stuck with me, get ready for some really good stuff, some top tips on how to edit, color grade, and how to do graphics in Premiere Pro. And I bet you that I'm going to show you something, at least one thing that you didn't know existed. If you have any sort of questions, please leave them in the question pod and I will pause every once in a while to get to those. So let me just put myself over here. So here we have, I have Premiere open and let me actually do it to the default Premiere that you would normally see when you are opening it up for the first time. So when you're opening up Premiere, oh, hello, what happened? It closed. So when you're opening up Premiere for the first time, you are going to have a layout with the program window on the left, uh, with the preview window on the left, with the program window on the right, with the timeline at the bottom, and with all of your footage and assets on the bottom left. You can always move those windows around, and I'm sure you know that. And you can make a window full screen by pressing the tilde key, which is a little squiggly line on the top left of your keyboard. And that is going to make the window full screen for you. Unfortunately, I had a little, little crash situation. So I'm going to have to just reload a couple of things. It'll be fine though. Don't worry about it. And we'll be back in just a sec. Okay. So here I am inside of Premiere. By default, this is what Premiere looks like, which is why I put myself in the bottom right corner because not much is happening there. And the way that I organize my project is I'll usually organize it in bins. So I'll have my footage bin, my music bin, graphics, sequences, and these are the sequences I'm using for the demo today. But uh, I also number them because that way, even if the words aren't in alphabetical order, I can organize it alphabetically if I click on the word name. The first thing I want to talk about is slow motion. So what if you have a bunch of footage that is in slow motion that you recorded at 60 frames per second? So like in this bin, for example, I have an entire bin of 60 frames per second footage. I'll double click on it. And if I play the footage through, what you'll see is even though it was recorded in 60 frames per second, it plays back in regular speed. Oh, it's already been interpolated, so give me a sec. Oh, there we go, yeah. So it plays back at regular speed instead. So it's not slow motion. How do you make it slow motion? Well, one thing you could do, right, is you can place it directly on a sequence and slow it down. So if I go back to my project, if I go into the bin that says sequences for demo, I select it, and then I go down here to new item, I can create a new sequence and I already have a preset that's perfect for YouTube that I called Valentina's 1080. The frame rate is 23.976, which is the standard frame rate. The standard frame size 1920 by 1080 square pixels. So I'm going to call this sequence um, string out for demo because we're going to make a string out. So here's my new sequence. There's nothing in it. And of course, if I want to slow down this clip, what I can do is I can drag the clip in here. There it is. It is a 4K clip currently, so it's a little punched in. You can tell because if I go to the zoom at 10% and then I select the clip itself, you can see that it's bigger than 1080. So I can always resize it if I want, or I can do the shortcut of right clicking and going to scale to frame size and it's going to automatically do that or i can do set to frame size you can see the the difference between scale to frame size and set to frame size is what the scale numbers are going to say here so right now it says that it's done it to 50 percent, which would be the same as if you are literally scaling it down you see how when i'm scaling it down the number here changes so when I'm scaling it, the number changes. So that's what happens when I do set to frame size. So I like doing set to frame size so that I could see the whole thing. And then if I want to slow it down, I can press R, which changes this to a rate button. 
and then I can just drag it, right? As much as like two times larger. And now it's gonna be in slow motion for me. But that's kind of annoying to have to do that to every single clip. Drag it in there, change it, you know, drag it, drag this one in there, change that, that's annoying. So instead I'm going to interpret all the clips at once. So I just did control Z, undo, undo, undo a bunch of times. And if I go into the list view of my clips, instead of my thumbnail view, I'll be able to see all my clips and I'll be able to see their frame rate. As you can see, their frame rate is 60 frames per second. I don't want that. I want them to be 23.976, the same as my sequence. So I will select all of them. I will right click and I will go to modify interpret footage. I'm going to interpret the clips. So when I click on that, it's going to give me, okay, what frame rate do you, you want to use? Do you want to use the frame rate for the file or do you want a new frame rate? I'm going to say I want a new frame rate, 23.976 frames per second. Pretty please with a cherry on top. And I'm going to press OK. And now when I view any of these clips, give it a sec to catch up. they're gonna be in slow motion already. And then when I drag them in, they're gonna retain that slow motion. Another thing that I like to do is, for example, in this project, I shot on the same camera, but I shot at several different picture profiles. So I shot in the standard picture profile, which is you know just standard colors, what your eye sees when you are viewing the image. But I also shot in log which is a flatter picture profile. It's more cinematic, but it requires a lot more color correction later on. So before I drag anything into my string out, what I'm gonna do is I will select all of the files that have been recorded with the log picture profile. And again, remember what I said, if you select the window and you press the tilde key, which looks like this, it's at the top left of your keyboard, you can see all of the files at once and you can actually make them bigger if you want. So in this case, which files have that flat picture profile? This one, this one, and this one. So this is gonna help me later when I'm color correcting, but I'm just gonna select all three of these and I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna select them and then go to the list view and then I'm going to go to label and then change the label to something else like purple, for example. So now I know that these clips, when I drag them in, they're gonna be purple. So now that I have those, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start building a string out. And a string out is just all the best parts of each clip, because if I drag the, the whole clip in here with no um, in and out points, if I drag the whole clip, this is th almost, yeah, over three minutes of footage. And there's a lot of stuff in there that I just don't want. Things like, I don't know, she's kind of beautiful. So there's there's nothing really that's like this, right? It's out of focus. I'm focusing like there's nothing useful there. So one way to do it is if you do want to drag the whole clip, you just press Command K, Q and W as you're trimming. So you go to the place where you want to start. Let me make this quarter quality so you can see maybe maybe there you want to start and to trim everything from the beginning of your clip to your playhead like to, to get rid of all of that and ripple everything forward all you have to do is press q there we go now i'll go to where i think the end of the usefulness ends like where it becomes blurry i'll do command k and that places a cut point then i'll go forward a little bit more until you know the place where i want it i'll press q that'll get rid of it um no i still don't want any of this so i'll keep going forward i'll keep going forward okay i want to start it there i'll press q and maybe to there command k so that's one way you can do it so q command k the W is if you want to say, get rid of everything between this cut point and your playhead, you press W and it gets rid of everything here. So if you press W, 
bam, it gets rid of everything there. But that that's kind of a long way to go about it. So what I like doing when I'm building my string out, I mean, that's a great way to go about it if you are vlogging or you have a long conversational piece, right? And then you can just quickly chop it up. But for quicker clips like this or for B-roll clips, what I like to do is I just keep my fingers on the I, O, and period keys which is really easy because they're just these three fingers. So I, O, period. And I'll go through each clip and I'll do like, okay, I, and that introduces an endpoint. And I'll keep going to where I want it. That I right there. Um, O right there and I'll press period and that'll insert the clip into my timeline. So that'll insert this portion of the clip, the clip that I designated within an out points into my timeline. And I'll keep going and I'll build out. So let's just say that I've built out the sequence really fast. So these are the clips that I wanna use. And then I've gone on to this clip. This is a very easy way to basically build out like what sections of each clip you want in there. Let me get to the place where I have my, um, I have my clips that are, that need the, that extra color correction. So see how now I've built out the sequence. It's at four minutes. It's only the best parts of each section. I'll do it here too. I'll grab some of these. So you can also clear in and out. So I'll go here, grab that. Obviously, if this was, if I was really doing this video, I would be watching through it, right? But just for the sake of this tutorial, since we're going really fast, I wanna show you how to do it really quickly. So that's what we're doing. So now I have my full string out here on this, um, on my timeline. But the thing is, I did record this in slow motion. So I have all of these, audio clips which i want to get rid of right but when you record video and audio together it's usually linked and you can tell that it's linked because it has a little it has that v in brackets you can see right here that v that means it's linked audio and video so what i could do if i wanted to get rid of all of the audio i could select it all right click go to unlink and then that would unlink it and I can just grab all of them and delete them because I don't need them. Or instead of unlinking, okay, so now they're linked, right? Because I un I did control Z, so I unlinked them all. I could just hold down alt or option on my keyboard and then I can select that audio without unlinking it and I can delete it there because I don't need it, right? So now that I have my string out and let's go to back to the project. Let's create a new sequence. Actually, let's let's use a sequence that I already have with all of the music already cut. So yeah, let's do it there. There we go. So here I have the music already cut and I can't play you the song. Literally can't play it because Shindig won't let me and also can't play it because it's copyrighted. But I have this song, it's you know under 30 seconds long. And what I want to do is I want to cut to the beat of the song using my string out. So one way to do it is to do it the slow way, boring, slow, by listening to it and then dragging each clip you know, in. The other way to do it is to place markers. And when you place markers, you can snap footage to those markers. All you have to do to place markers is press the M button on your keyboard, M for marker. So just pretend like you can hear the music. I know you can't, so I'll sing it for you. But I'm a very bad singer, but as it's playing, I'm gonna press the M button. And what you'll see is right here, above the top bar, you'll start seeing these little green markers appear. You can see they're already here. I already placed a couple right here. And these, this will help me snap later. So I'll go through it. And all it takes is one. Let me give you motivation to do it all right. 
you got that good good got that good good mm -hmm, mm -hmm. ain't regular that ain't regular okay so i mean am i not the best singer in the whole world i swear so i've placed all of these markers here which means this is where i want my cuts to go and now i don't have to guess about it so here i have my string out it's in a different tab and then here I have my song, it's in a different tab. So instead of going like, okay, I wanna use this clip, so I'm gonna command copy it, then go here, command paste it there. That's, that's a lot of work. So instead, I'm going to pancake these timelines. I'm gonna bring the audio timeline underneath the string out timeline. This is called pancake editing. So there it is. So now I can literally drop the clips in. There we go. Trim it to the marker. See how it immediately jumps to where the marker is. Then I'll bring in one of these purple clips, for example, trim it to the next marker or to the next several markers, whatever I want the beat to be. I'll bring in another one of these clips. And obviously I would be watching through them again. I'm not just gonna be dropping them willy nilly when I'm actually editing this. But just for demo purposes, this is what I want to show you guys. So yeah, let's let's do let's do that for now. Okay, and let's put it back. So this is our this is our new beginning of our new song or of our new video. And you can see that maybe it's not perfectly aligned yet. right? Because I just blindly did it. So one thing that you can do, like say you want a different portion of this clip, but you don't want to put the clip up on a second layer, expand it, find where that usable portion is again, like, oh, okay, maybe there, then bring it back, then trim it, then pop it back in. That's really annoying to do. So instead, you can just use the slip tool. So you can select it and then press Y on your keyboard. And as you can see, it turns your mouse into this selection here. So instead of V, which is your regular pointer, pressing Y turns it into the slip tool. So now you can, as you click and drag, you can slip along the clip on the inside and you can choose where the beginning frame of the clip is, where the end of frame of the clip is. So you can choose a better section of the clip if you want. Now, ideally, you know, you've taken the time to make your string out really good, so you don't have to do this later. But maybe, you know, maybe you made a little mistake and you want to correct it. That's fine. So you can slip along and find a better section of the clip. Now, if I want to do color correction to these clips that are already pretty well colored, what do I do? Well, I can go to window. Oh, before we do that, before we move on to the color, um, does anybody have any questions with these shortcuts? I know I went through them fast, but let me know if you have any questions before we move on to some of my top color tips. Let me know, put them in the question pod there's a little question icon because if you put them in the chat room, I might not see it. <laughs> People saying amazing singing. Yeah. I mean, thanks. All right. Well, if there are any questions, um, Pete asks, what did the W shortcut do again? Thank you, Pete Tomkeys. The W shortcut will get rid of everything from your playhead to the end of the next cut. So if I wanted to, for example, place a cut right here. Uh, let me make that smaller. Let's do that. Okay, so if I wanted to place a cut right here on this clip, on this clip right here, so if I wanted to place a cut at my playhead and then get rid of everything after the cut to the next cut, right? One way to do it would be to go over to your uh, to your cut tool, blade tool, slice tool, cut it, then select it, delete it, 
and now you have a gap. So then you right click ripple delete. So that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to press command K. So that inserts a cut and then you can select it. You can delete it. You can press a click that selects everything after your mouse and then bring it forward. That's another way to do it. And then the shortest way of all to do it is just to press W and that's it. Pretty cool, right? All right, let's move on to color. So we have this now, we have two different styles of, um, of video here. And um, also they're all way too cropped in because I haven't uh, resized them to the frame. So I can just select all of them, right click and go to set to frame size. So now that they're full size, because I recorded them in 4K, but they're in HD right now. I also have a shortcut for this, which is uh, Command Shift F, and you can always create new shortcuts by going to Edit Prefer Edit Keyboard Shortcuts, and then here you can even type in what that shortcut is. So set to frame size. You can see there's actually a couple of shortcuts that I created for set to frame size, so you can create your own shortcuts. But anyway, so now I have this is kind of to imitate say you are shooting from two different camera angles, right? So you are shooting with like an A7S II and a GH4 or with a Canon camera and a Panasonic camera. This is kind of to imitate that. You know, you have two completely different profiles. So what do you do? Well, first let's add color to this profile. So you can either go to your color workspace Sometimes my zoom tool is kind of weird. So you can either go to your color workspace or you can just go to window, Lumetri color and pull up the Lumetri color window. And I'll actually, Lumetri color panel, I should say. And I'll actually put it in the middle here just so that you can see it a little bit easier with this interface here. So here's the clip I'm trying to color. Here's my Lumetri color. The first thing that I can try is just pressing the auto button. So that way everything will be done automatically for you. Press auto, it takes a few seconds. And if you like that, that's cool. You can also go to effect controls over here at the top. And the second that you change anything in Lumetri Color, what happens is that the Lumetri Color effect appears in your effect controls. And then you can press the effects button right next to it to toggle it on and off to check what that color is doing. So I actually really like what it's doing to the sky and what it's doing to darken the sky up, but it's darkening up my subject quite a bit. So I can go back in and adjust that. So for example, I can raise the shadows. I can maybe keep the blacks where they were. I can increase the contrast a little bit, maybe increase the shadows a little bit more. And now I can check that Lumetri color correction, maybe even more on the contrast. So there we go. So that kind of is a good way to, to do it really quickly, you know, play with the sliders a little bit, maybe give it a little bit more of a golden sunset. Another fun thing you can do is if you go into the creative tab inside of Lumetri color, you can see that there are a lot of creative looks that are available for you to try on. And if you want to just select one, you can, and it'll apply it directly to your footage. Or something else you can do is you can just audition them right here by pressing the forward and back arrows. And that will in this little window that will kind of audition the creative looks so you can see if you like any of them. Like I really like this one, for example. So once I find something I like, I can just click on it and it will apply to my clip. I really like this. Maybe I'll stick with it. Let's see if there's any other ones that I really like, but I think that's the one that I'm gonna stick with. Ooh, I really like this one too, but eh, not so much, not as much. Let's, yeah, let's stick with this one. The only thing that I would change is I'll go into my, let's go into curves. 
now let's stick with creative and there's these shadow tint and highlight tint selections so you can tint the shadows and you know in the classic style of orange to blue which is a very classic color combination because you can see that orange and blue are opposite sides of the color wheel what i'll do is i'll increase the blue in the shadows a little bit by dragging that point towards the blue and i'll increase like the red or orange in the highlights there and i can actually change the balance of that tint so maybe i'll change it more towards the shadows there we go and now look at the lumetri color difference this was the original now it's graded a little bit which is quite nice so now if i want to apply it to the other clips that i have i could select the lumetri color effect copy it by going to command c or control c then go to each clip and paste it but what if you have like a million clips right that's not going to work if you have like a really long video so the other thing you can do remember how we labeled it earlier you can right click and then go to label select label group so it's going to select all of the clips on the timeline that are that blue iris color it's going to select all of them and then i can just deselect the one that already has the color correction in it by pressing shift and now i deselected it and then I can go Command V. And now I've applied it to all of the clips that had this blue label on them. And then I didn't apply it to the clips that had the, that were purple, right? So now with the purple clips, this is log footage. So it's flat for a reason. And one thing that you could do is you can go up to basic correction and you can work with log footage just natively inside of Premiere without doing anything fancy. So for example, you can increase the contrast, you can increase the saturation, um, exposure, maybe lower the blacks a little bit, increase the highlights. You can get it to, you know, bring back a lot of that original color, but and you can, like, I'm not saying that this is the wrong way to do it at all, but it's just not going to look as pristine. It's not going to look as perfect as it does even here. So what I want to do is I'm going to delete that Lumetri color. I'm going to start over. And I want to apply this color correction to this clip, right? So if I copy paste the Lumetri color from this clip to this clip, what happens is it doesn't look the same. Why? Because what I did to this clip is actually, I didn't color correct it. I added a color grade, grade. So the difference between color correcting and color grading is that color correcting takes it back to what you saw with your naked eye, which was the original here. This is what I saw with my naked eye. Then color grading is adding creative looks on top of that. So let me color correct this first before I add the color grade. And I'm going to do that with a LUT. So a LUT is a lookup table, and it's basically just a mathematical formula that says, take this gray pixel and turn it into this colored pixel. And there's a lot of LUTs that you can choose from, or you can browse and upload your own. But I'm just going to play with the ones that are here already to see if I can get to a LUT that is close enough to what I saw with my naked eye. That's pretty close. Let's see. That's pretty close. I like that. So that, this is just one of the LUTs that are built in with the program. And now that I've got my LUT on, I can go to this clip. I can copy paste. So I can control copy the Lumetri color. This clip, because I've added the LUT, it already has a Lumetri color on it, but guess what? You can add as many Lumetri colors as you want. So if I paste another Lumetri color on top of it, now I have two Lumetri colors. One of them is the correction. So this is the correction and this is the grade. And together they will create an image that matches my other image. Now it might not match perfectly or exactly and maybe you want it to match a little bit more perfectly so you want to see them side to side 
It's really easy to do that. All you have to do is go into color wheels and match. So here it's going to enable you. It's going to let you pull up the comparison view. So if you click comparison view, it's going to pull up two clips on your timeline. And this is the clip that you're currently working on. And this is the clip that you're trying to match. So if I am currently working on the clip that was originally uh, graded flat, but I'm trying to match my other clip, I can move this, move this slider down here to go to the frame that I'm trying to match. So I'm trying to match what frame? The one directly after, let's see, at six seconds. I'm trying to match this frame with this one. And I can go ahead and now that I have them both together, I can go ahead and see, okay, I definitely need a little bit, well, need to crush the blacks a little bit more, need to crush the shadows a little bit more. I can do that. Or I can just go to apply match. And this works. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it does. You can try apply match. It's going to analyze it and boom, it's going to do an exact match. Look at that. That was so perfect just there. So again, all I did was click apply match and it did it for me automatically. So now that I have these two Lumetri colors, again, the first one is the correction. The second one is the grade. And remember how we colored all of the ungraded clips with that label? Guess what? I am going to, I'll get out of comparison view. You can also get out of comparison view here at the bottom. There's a comparison view button underneath. And if you don't see the comparison view button, you can go to that plus icon and that will pull up more buttons for you. So you'll be able to pull more buttons into your button editor. Like for example, the record button you can put in here or the toggle proxies button, which I already have. So I'm gonna get out of the comparison mode. And I know that this is like the final color correction that I want for all of the clips that I have colored that were originally flat. So I'm gonna select the color grade. Now the order in which I select this is important because if I select this one first and that one second, it's gonna place them in that same order. See if they're out of order, if I change the order, it changes the grade. So if I select the first one, then the second one, I hold down uh, con command or control and I select both of them and I go command copy. And then I right click, go to label, select label group, shift, unselect the clip that's already corrected. Oops, I clicked something. Label, select label group, shift, unclick, and then command V. Now I have pasted that color correction across to my other clips. But if I, um, didn't do that in order. So say I did that, like I selected this first and then this second and then copied it. And now I'm pasting it. See how it, it doesn't do the same grade because I didn't select them in the same order. So it's very important to select them in the order that they are in their effects stack. If you want the same exact color correction to happen, select first the color correction, then the color grade, command copy again, right click, label, select label group, deselect the one that um, we already uh, graded and then paste. All right, everybody, that was our little color correction, really quick rundown. Does anybody have any questions about that before we go on to our little graphics rundown? Hopefully that was helpful to you. Do, 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 do. Let me know if anybody has any questions, pull them up on the screen. Miriam asks, how do I make the colors in my exported MP4 video match how it looked in Premiere Pro? It always looks more saturated within Premiere. So the way that you view colors on a video is gonna change with whatever screen you are looking at it, right? So if you're viewing the video on an iPhone, it's gonna look different than if you're viewing the video on a, um, on a screen versus a different monitor versus a Mac versus a PC, everything's gonna look different. And, but I know you're talking about 
when you actually put a video in your on the same screen as your premiere and it looks different this has to do a lot with compression bitrate and codecs an mp4 export is going to be lossy which means that a lot of that original color is going to be lost so i would highly recommend if you don't want to lose the exact color fidelity that you are seeing in premiere pro to instead export it as a quicktime prores hq 422 so if you go like say i wanted to export this video i press command m yeah, so here's my export window. So instead of the format H.264, I will go to a QuickTime and the preset, I would choose ProRes 422HQ. So that's gonna give you like the highest quality, the highest fidelity, but it's also gonna make your file size a lot larger. So yeah. And if you feel like there's always that difference, like if you have to export an MP4 and you feel like it's always a little bit redder just know that whoever your viewer is, number one, probably won't care. And number two, they're probably going to be watching it on a completely different screen. So instead of testing your final video on your computer screen, test it on your phone. Not only the video, but the audio as well. Because what happens is when you're playing a video through your phone and speakers, the if you have an underlying music track, that music track always gets quieter when you're playing through speakers. So you almost always have to bump it up more. Oh, I wasn't sharing my screen. Oh, so sorry. I wasn't sharing my screen. So this is what I meant. So if you go to, if you press Command M and you go up here to format. So instead, if you press the, um, instead of H.264, if you go to QuickTime and you select the uh, Apple ProRes 422HQ. That's going to be the least loss of data and information. That's all I wanted to say. It wasn't uh, it wasn't super important to see my screen, but thank you for telling me. All right, so let's move on to the very um, last thing that I wanted to show you, which was graphics and how you can use them. And I just wanted to let you know that specifically for the people who are here in the session with me, we have special graphics that we've created. So if you go to adobe.ly slash free templates, you can get professional free motion graphics templates that are created specifically for the people watching me today. And they look like this. So this is that website. So you'll get a, you'll get a lower third, you'll get an intro, you'll get an outro, and you'll get a transition for free. And you can download them and put them in your library. Also, if you go to adobe.ly slash VidCon2020, you will be able to get, um, sign up for the chance to win a free one-year membership of Adobe Creative Cloud. So for all of y'all who have stuck it out this long, you get this link and you get to apply. And since there's not a ton of people watching, there's a very good chance that you might actually win this. So all you have to do is fill out a sh short survey and you might win an entire year of Creative Cloud, which is really impressive. So I suggest you do that. All right, so let's go to where we have our finished commercial. So this is our finished commercial that I actually took time to edit instead of, you know, just eyeballing it for demonstration purposes. <laughs> Give it a second to catch up with me. Okay, so this is what it looks like. I'll just play it through a little bit so you can see what the vibe is, what the colors are, the footage looks like. So what I want to do is I want to include a, an intro screen here. So I'll go to window, I'll go to essential graphics. Essential graphics is basically where you're going to do all of your graphics. You're going to find your graphics templates. You're going to edit your graphics templates and I'll pull them in here again. So you can see them a little better. And here you'll see, these are actually the graphics templates that are available to you um, through that link 
for you know the free templates for VidCon. So I'm gonna take the modern title with expanding circle and all I'm gonna do is drop it onto here. And if I play it through, um, what has happened when I selected it is it's gone from the browse window where you can find new motion graphics templates to the edit window where you can edit the template. By default, it just has some um, just some text, some dummy text, lorem ipsum. But what I want to do is I want to change this to custom text. So I can just double click it and I can type in, you know, Dana Cleeton, which is the name of the model. And then in Redmilla Lolly, which is the name of the designer. So that already looks pretty good. Let's play it through. Yeah, that already looks pretty good, except my brand font, let's just say that I have a brand font, let's pretend. It's actually my favorite font, Proxima Nova. And this in its default is Roboto. So I'll go Proxima Nova, please, black, thank you. I can expand the distance between the letters a little bit. Now at the beginning, it's kind of fading into the sun here. So I'll give it a little bit of a shadow. That looks good, nothing too crazy. Nothing too wild. There we go. And the same thing with the subtitle. I'll go ahead and give it a brand font, Proxima Nova. Let's do bold. Bold might be a little much, semi bold. I'll also give it a shadow. And yeah, I'll make it a little bit more intense. And then I can even change, since the circle is here, I can even change the circle. So Right now it's just a stroke. That's what's happening. If I wanted to add a fill, for example, I could add a fill, but I just wanna make the stroke thicker probably, and then make it just a little bit more pink. So this is what that looks like. And then when it gets to her face, I just won't want it to be over. So I'll just cut it off there. Cool. So then I have this at the end and I have this clip where she walks out. Oh, this doesn't have the same color correction on the top and bottom. Whoop, whoop. We'll do it here. So she walks out of the frame. But what I've done is I have this top um, clip, which I've masked her body out. So if I disable the the video, so I'll just toggle the, the bottom layer off you'll be able to see what that looks like. So this is just her body, you know, exiting out of the frame. So what I wanna do is I wanna put the credits in the middle here so that the credits are kind of obscured by her body a little bit. So I'll go into the essential graphics window. Yikes, I'll go to browse. And here in Adobe Stock, there's two uh, tabs. There's the templates that you already have on your machine and there's the Adobe Stock templates. Here in Adobe Stock, I can type in credits and I want a free template, please. Thank you, credits. And ta-da, data-driven end credit roll. So I'll just take this template and pop it in. And by default, it has, um, it looks like this director, writer, etc. So the first thing I'm going to do background controls, I'm going to turn the background controls, turn the opacity all the way down. Then for the credit roll controls, I'll work on those later, I'll click edit spreadsheet data. Now you can actually upload your own spreadsheet, or you can just edit the data of the current spreadsheet. So that's what I'll do. It opens up the spreadsheet. And it's asking me how many rows I want, I only need two rows there's only one person per title. So instead of director, I'll write created by, instead of writer, I'll say um, starring assistant makeup fashion music. And then the rest of them, I'm just gonna delete what's written here. And if I delete what's written, then they won't show up. And of course, if I did this, if I imported my own spreadsheet, then I could, um, I don't have to do any of this deleting. 
But anyway, so now I write the names down of everyone really quickly. Valent, oh my gosh. Oh, I can't spell my name apparently. Valentina V starring Dana Cleeton, assistant Alexander Kennison, makeup, fashion, and music is DJ Vice. Okay. Great. So very quickly, I have made a spreadsheet. I have made the data and it is now here and it is now scrolling through. Kind of wanted to start there though. It's now scrolling through maybe a little bit earlier, but it's not, it's not perfect. So let's make it perfect. Credit roll controls. So I want the spacing between the headings to be less. I want the spacing between the credit and the name to be less. I want the duration. So I want it to end like there. So I want the duration to be fast. Okay, great. And I'm going to make the whole thing bigger by going into my, um, my controls here in effect controls. I'm just going to scale it up by a lot. So hopefully we can see it maybe like change the duration, make it a little bit longer and then cut it off there. So now I've created I guess she doesn't really cross in front of it, which is fine. If but you can see that if I wanted to like if I wanted to like shift it over, then she would be crossing in front of it. But that's okay. Maybe if I if I make it a little bit sooner, maybe then. But yeah. Right now it's playing at one fourth. So here I'm gonna play it at full. All right, well, say that this is a YouTube video and I wanna have an end card too. So I'll go to browse and I'll go, I'll look for end card. And here's a great end card, minimal end card. If I hover over it, I can see what it actually looks like. There, it has some animation. So I'll go ahead and drag it in to my project. Thank you. It'll take just a second to set up. And here's what it actually looks like by default. And it has all these controls, like you can position it, you can change what the text says. So let me actually grab the one that I already finished for you. So, cause we're running out of time. <clears throat> so here we go. Let me grab this card and put it here for you so you can see the difference. Okay. So this is what the default end card looks like. Looks awesome. But then if you change it up, you change up a bunch of controls, you can make it say and be the same color as whatever you want. So this is what my end card looks like. So I did, you know, my brand colors and my brand font and everything. And then obviously on YouTube, then I would put in the actual thumbnails, the clickable thumbnails. And to just to finish it off, just for funsies, what I'm going to do is I'm going to include a little voiceover. This is just an extra little fun thing that I want to show you before we sign off. So to record a voiceover, all you have to do is press this um, icon with the microphone. Thank you. Thank you, my brain, that finally started working. I'm going to place my playhead right where that should start. And I'm going to click the microphone and take my headphones off so I don't hear myself talking. And as I press record, it's going to have a countdown, three, two, one, and then I can talk. So here we go. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please subscribe to my channel and like the video. Hit the bell to get notifications. I make new videos every Wednesday. Ta-da! Done. And now I finish. Now I have this end card with this awesome voiceover. And that is it, my friends. That is the entire lesson. Let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully, um, I know I went through things a little bit fast, so I know that this will be available on the VidCon um, 
YouTube channel for you to rewatch. Also, my gel fell back there. That's why it's so bright. Linda asks, what's the name of the graphic? The name of which graphic? The end card graphic is called Minimal End Card, and it is a free graphic in the Adobe Stock Store. What's awesome about the Adobe Essential Graphics, if you go into Adobe Stock and you just press free, there's so many awesome, there's so many awesome free templates that are available in the Adobe Stock Store. So let's take a look. There's so, 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 and, and I did free, right? If I didn't do free along with all the premium ones, you can see what the premium ones look like. Some of them have, you know, multiple different templates within one template. So like this gradient title, you could have multiple. Um, some of them just have one, some of them, all of them are pretty much customizable with fonts and colors, durations, all of that good stuff. And there's a lot. So if I select free, now these are just the free ones, but you can see even the free ones are really fun. And if you wanna be more specific about it, you can type something in like lower thirds and it'll show you just the lower thirds. Like right now it's showing me just the free lower thirds. And I wanna be clear, this is not the templates that, this is not your regular templates that come with a software, right? Like if you download like a simple editing software and it just comes with a few templates, these are from users who submit them into the Adobe Stock Store. So they're always growing, they're always changing. In fact, if you type in Valentina V, my name, you'll be able to see the templates that I've made that are available for free in the Adobe Stock Store. So that's really cool. Um, again, I'd like to remind you that if you go to these links, VidCon 2020, you can enter for a chance to win a full year of Creative Cloud, which is super, uh, it's a super good deal. And if you go to adobe.ly slash free templates, you'll be able to get four professional free premium templates that you can use with your projects. You can also follow Adobe at these social links right here. And if you'd like to follow me, you can follow me right here on Instagram or on Twitter. And I'm just saying like, if you want to take a photo of this live chat and post it to your Instagram story, feel free. I will repost it, re restory it, re, I don't know what it's called, but I'll post it on my story if you want. Cause I love it when people are actually paying attention and engaged and all of that. Well, thank you so much for um, for coming to this. I really appreciate it. Again, uh, I know I went fast, so this replay will be available, I'm guessing soon, on the VidCon YouTube page. So watch out for that. And when it is available, I'll, I will tweet about it and I will post about it on Instagram. So if you follow me, you'll be able to get those notifications. Thank you so much. Have an amazing day and uh, best of luck. Bye.